Good eye, Derek Barker's pop quiz. What's that? I'm sure most of you guys have seen them before. No, it is not a futuristic clothes peg. No, it is not a protractor. No, that's not the word I'm after. You know that thing you use in graphics class to draw circles? Compass? Is it a compass? Oh, you know what I mean. Anyway, it's your standard motorcycle throttle lock. Uh, sometimes referred to as a cruise control device, very rudimentary cruise control. It simply locks your throttle into the position of your choosing. Obviously a very handy thing to have on long rides. You know, you're cruising along the highway, doing some transport sections or some boring flat dirt roads to get to the next awesome trail. You can easily take your clutch hand off the handlebars and relax it, but as soon as you take your hand off the throttle, boom, the bike wants to stop. Really a simple, great little idea for relieving a bit of the strain on your on your right hand if you're doing a long rod. Now just a disclaimer guys, I don't recommend that you use these. All I'm telling you is what I'm doing with it, okay? Obviously with any sort of device like this, there is a risk involved. Throttle could get stuck on somehow, you could crash. But the way I see it, generally your first response when you have to stop in an emergency situation is pull that clutch in anyway, so that's going to negate having a throttle wide open and you've got your emergency switch right there if it does get stuck i think these things are pretty well foolproof but disclaimer i don't recommend you use them simply for that fact that things can go wrong but having said that i discovered an awesome little trick with this guy that it may be common knowledge i've never seen it done before it's so good that i wanted to share it with you guys it's these sort of little discoveries that that just make life that just a little bit better you know everything's sort of Stuff just sometimes falls into place. And you know, why keep it to myself when I can share it with you guys? Anyway, firstly, let's get the basics out of the way. When you buy these, they come with a little silicone sleeve that you can stretch over your, your hand grip here. And then that just sort of helps this to slide nicely on it. And then you tighten it around that little sleeve. You don't have to use a sleeve. It really depends on what your grips are made of. These rubbery ones, you don't need it. Um, so you tighten it up and then what happens is obviously you're cruising along hands getting a bit sore want to have a rest you just get, get your thumb and push that around until the until that device is i don't have it tight enough sorry so you push it around until it's resting on your brake lever and that'll hold your throttle open as long as you want it to easy enough to wind it off if you need to and that's back to closed as you can see, I have cut my brake and both my clutch and brake levers are cut down to two finger size. So it was a little bit of a worry to me, only pretty much being able to get one finger onto that onto that um, brake now. And like where it, where it sits, it sort of can move around a little bit too. So it can probably just about lock your rod off of that brake and not ideal in a panic braking situation. But I found a solution, guys. I found a solution. Most of you guys will have full length levers so it won't worry you, but this solution is so freaking tidy anyway. And it's going to really depend on the hand grips you're using. If you haven't seen me spruiking off about these ODI lock-on grips before, do yourself a favour and check it out. I'll put a link to the video on the install and you'll see just how awesome they are. Um, I don't need to tell you over and over, but check it out. They're freaking great. They lock on. I know there's other brands, uh, I'm pretty sure ProTaper do some lock-on grips and some other brands do similar sorts of things too. I've never tried them, I've used these ODI, these are the Rogue ones, they're freaking awesome. Just quickly, when you buy them, they come with a throttle tube, they come with a bunch of cams that fit different throttle housings, so where your little cables go into. This one here on the Tenere 700 uses the same cam that all the WR and YZ bikes, four strokes use, so direct fit for that. On the clutch side, it's a solid plastic tube with a grip uh, permanently joined to it. It just clamps on with a little Allen key bolt down here. You don't need any glue, you don't need any tie wire, you don't need paint and all that bullshit. They just, they lock on and they, they don't fucking move, I'm telling you. Once you've used these grips, you just won't be going back to standard grips. All right, so what's the trick, Josh? What's the little hack? I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. You've got to have the ODI grips. Other lock-on grips may work. This trick with these grips may not work on other bikes. Basically what you need is this gap here, and we're gonna put that in that gap, all right? 
with these lock-on grips when you get them. I'm not sure about every bike, but there's a, a gap on, on these ones and on our KDMs as well, and notice it's exactly the same. You'll see there's a white white bit of plastic tube inside there that's, uh, that's actually part of the throttle tube. So to get this thing out of the way, what I thought was, why can't I just put it here instead? That way kills two birds with one stone, gets it out of my way. It's a lot tidier. It can't move from side to side. It's like it was made for it. So to do it, um, if I just put that straight on there the way it was, that with that plastic white bit of tubing there, the clamp won't grip. It won't go small enough to actually grip that, and it'd probably be too slippery anyway. So what I did was I got the, the silicon ring that comes with the throttle lock, and I cut this two there's a raised sort of ridge on each edge of it i just got some scissors and i cut along that just to so i just left the middle strip without the two raised bits slipped that onto the grip got it over this part you got to be careful that you don't break it and and that goes right in there um, and that gives it just enough to grip on you tighten it right down and it works bloody perfectly throttle open wind it around boom it's out of the way. I've got heaps of finger space to get onto the brake there. And when you when you don't need it, it's just, it's out of the way. I don't even notice it. See, I've been on a couple of off-road rides and I don't even notice it there. So guys, again, disclaimer, there is a slight chance, depending on, on your bike and, and throttle tubes set up and shit, there may be a slight chance that that silicon ring will get caught underneath that and your throttle will get jammed on. So please don't do this at home. This is just me showing you what I've done. Okay, if you do this and your throttle gets jammed on and your bike wheelies into the side of a semi-trailer or something, that's not my fault. I told you not to do it, okay? Don't do it. But that's what I'm doing. It hasn't jammed up for me or anything. It seems to be working perfectly. And, uh, I mean, just look at it. It's matte black like everything else on this bike. It just looks like it's meant to be there. It's a, it's a, it looks like an OEM accessory. So, yeah, how cool is that? I mean, probably it's possible that a hundred other guys have already discovered this little hack but you know i just wanted to share it with you guys anyway in case some of you haven't seen it or heard of it again don't do it yourself <laughs> i feel like i gotta say that guys just in case something happens i don't want to be responsible for anybody's death uh, i'm going to leave a link where you can get these if you haven't seen them before um, and you want to grab one they're on ebay or amazon i'll leave an amazon affiliate link in the description you can go amazon if you want that way we get a small percentage of the sale. I'd probably recommend you go to eBay because generally with eBay you get free postage with Amazon. I think these are about 12 bucks or something like that posted from eBay in Australia. Uh, if you go onto Amazon, I think you probably pay about the same and then you pay another 7 bucks for shipping. But you know, whatever. The ODI grips, I think they're about 45 bucks. I've never worn out a set yet. I've got a set on the KDM 500. They've been going for years. They're really great guys they're worth the 45 bucks i know your standard grips are 20 bucks but you're getting a brand new throttle tube with each set of grips and just the headaches that they save you is well worth it again i can't guarantee that every single bike and throttle tube setup is going to have the required clearance in here to do it but i don't see why not it, it should be fine another thing to note too guys if your bike is a ride by wire such as the kdm 390 adventure you won't be able to use these lock-on grips because they don't use a standard throttle tube and cable assembly, obviously. But you can get ODI Rogue grips, just not the lock-on type. Nat's got the, the ODI Rogues on her 390, but again, they're not the lock-on type, but they are, are still a good grip. So, I mean, you know, if you, if you don't want this thing on your bike permanently, I'm just going to leave mine on there. I don't give a shit. It weighs bugger all. It's made out of CNC aluminium. It's lightweight. It's not in the way, but very easy to take it off and stick it in your awesome Nelson rig tank bag when you're not using it. Now you might notice that this is a different tank bag to the one I had uh, not long ago. This is my original one. I do prefer this one in general to the Nelson rig Hurricane. That big Hurricane one is much bigger and it's waterproof which is awesome but just for general day-to-day -day use I go with the Trails and tank bag. It's small. It looks way better on this bike. It just suits it perfectly. Look at it. And it's big enough for my day-to-day -day crap. It's got these nice little side pouches. And it's not waterproof, but it does come with a waterproof cover that goes right over it. It's a friggin' awesome little tank bag. The only one complaint I would have about it is this stuff in here, which is it's not a big deal, but it just sort of gets in the way a bit, you know. But it is handy because what it actually is is an extension. So I've, I've mentioned this before to you guys, but 
yeah, you can unzip that zip there, and boom, you've got enough room for a six pack in there, as well as all your other crap. So that's like extendable up to, I don't know how many liters it is, but yeah, pretty cool. I don't know how I got onto talking about tank bags, but anyway, the best thing about this tank bag is the freaking price, guys. I think these are 150 bucks. 150 bucks with the included rain cover, all the mounting bits and pieces, 150 bucks and <laughs> a lifetime warranty as well. I mean, you can't beat that. You just can't beat that. Show me a, a lifetime warranty tank bag with this sort of quality for 150 bucks. And you can usually pick it up with free shipping too. So yeah, I love this little tank bag. But you know, if you're looking for quality gear and you're on a budget, I mean, who doesn't want to save money? Anyway, the cruise control, guys, yeah, awesome idea. Once again, don't do it. I don't want to be responsible for anybody dying or getting hurt, so please don't do it. But I'm going to do it. Speaking of me uh, killing and injuring people, a few of you guys have been asking about Tony and how he's going. I did speak to him on the phone yesterday, and he's doing okay. He told me they'd actually listed him as life-threatening when they transferred him from Gympie Hospital to the Sunshine Coast, so that's quite serious, obviously. I think he's pretty much out of the woods now. Obviously, he's at home. Um, he has to go back for scans on his lungs every week, I think he said, or maybe every fortnight, because he's got pretty bad bruising on his lungs where they were punctured, and that bruising apparently takes quite a while to heal, and it can be quite dangerous. So, yeah, the, the ribs given him a lot of pain, obviously, uh, and that shoulder... I think someone commented and said that's an AC injury that he's got on his shoulder. It's, yeah, the clavicle or the collarbone has come away from his shoulder. Um, then I think he said they're not sure if it's just really stretched the tendon or it's actually broken. But either way, he's in for a long, long recovery by the sound of it. So thank you guys for all your well wishes and stuff. And hang in there, Tony. We all know what it's like to be uh, injured, but I doubt whether many of us have experienced the pain that uh, you've been going through, mate. But he's got the good drugs, he's got the good painkillers, and I'm sure his miso has taken good care of him. So yeah, I just thought I'd give you guys an update on Tony. What other crap can I talk about? The only obvious difference with the big T7 now is the new SRC crash bars. I had the Outback Motortech lower crash bars before. Yeah, they just, they only come up here really. So they protect this lower part. The amount that I was dropping the bike, I'm starting to get a bit worried about smashing all this and munting up my radiator and everything. So I thought, bugger it. I'll get some proper crash bars on here with a bit more protection. SRC come along and helped us out with that. These bars speak for themselves. Look at them. You've got an eight millimeter thick stainless mounting plate here. They're 25 mil tube with two mil wall thickness. So they're solid as. So they mount back here, they mount up underneath the headlight here, and they go across beneath the radiator as well. So a lot of strength in those guys. They come with these plastic sliders. I actually didn't know what the hell they were to start with. When I was looking at the photos of the SRC <laughs> crash bars, I thought there was some there was some kind of joiner or something. I'm like, what the hell would there be a join there for? But yeah, no, the sliders. I feel like me water pump and this you know the engine cases are still a little bit too exposed but with the b and b bashy on there that gives a fair bit of protection like i've dropped it quite a few times and this little edge here is taking the brunt most of the time and i think saved a lot of that you know with these sticking out as far as they do you'd have to actually land it on a rock sticking out to do any damage to the rest of the motor i mean that does happen obviously but i mean you've got to draw the line somewhere you could put armor all the way around the bike but fuck's sake i would really like to get those lower crash bars from src on here but can't quite get them to fit with the bnb bash plate and i don't want to give up the bnb bash plate because it's freaking awesome it's saved me quite a bit already probably the best idea is to just stop dropping the bike josh hey stop crashing thankfully all my crashes so far have been pretty much walking pace or slower so can't complain too much Anyways, if you're interested in these crash bars for your T7, they've got crash bars for Africa Twins, BMWs, the works. Check out srcadventuremoto.com.au. They're based in Brisbane. You'll get your gear pretty quick if you're in Australia. I don't want this to sound like a commercial, guys, but, but you know, when you find a good product, you just want to share it with people. 
Same with the SRC headlight protector, man. That thing is bulletproof, like, and pops off without any screws if you need to clean that headlight. So, you know, don't get much better than that. All I need now, I reckon, on this bike is maybe some auxiliary lights. They'll mount up on that crash bar pretty well, I reckon. And uh, it should be a nighttime weapon. Not that I like riding at night, but sometimes you get caught out. Oh, man, we've had a fair bit of rain out here, guys. It's muggy as hell right now. Um, but we needed the rain. I'm not going to complain about that at all. Hopefully the creeks and stuff are flowing a fair bit now and everything's going to start coming back nice and green. So that's awesome. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching so far, guys. I'll leave you with a little bit of an edit. Uh, I did of a solo ride. I want to say last week. It might have been the week before. I can't really remember, but yeah, nothing too exciting. But if you've got another 15 minutes to kill, hang around and watch that. Otherwise, catch us on the next video, guys. Cheers. I suppose I probably should give you guys a little bit of a demo of the cruise control working, just in case you haven't seen it. I mean, it's not really much to see, but uh, yeah, you know, once I get onto the road, I'll uh, crack it on for you. Right, I'll try out the cruise for you. Roll the throttle where you want it. Push it forward. And we're riding with no hands. Not legal, but you know, you give that hand a bit of a rest. I think if you do it, you should probably keep your hand on the bar anyway, in case you need to grab that brake. But yeah, I think because of the actual angle shape of it, it's designed so that when you grab the brake and pull the brake in, it actually pushes that up and off. So, the throttle's locked on there. See how it pushes, the, pushes it up and releases it anyway. So, yeah, pretty good. And if you want to just release it manually, it's easy enough to just roll it throttle off anyway there you go Good. how slippery that shit is <laughs> I'm racing around that corner sideways, but can't anymore. All this bark on the ground makes it really hard to see the big rocks sticking up. There was one. <laughs> right here is, I think, where I dropped the bike on the last solo ride out here. Yeah. <laughs> No problem getting up there or just yeah it's a little bit lost a little bit of momentum and um I was in second gear and just didn't have time to get down to first and yeah ran out of oomph down she went now there's an easy way to get up this bank i just found over there but uh i'm an idiot so i'm going to try and go up this bit here i bet it doesn't look like much and it probably isn't but uh, we'll find out. That little branch at the top there is going to be in the way. No worries, mate.
buddy. Let's see if we can get on this rocky bitch. Second gear, ping it. Skip over them rocks, baby. Hey. All right, I'm gonna be coming up to the hill where I dropped me bike last ride. I'll show you how easy it is to get up that hill. And therefore prove how much of a numbskull I am. <laughs> Actually, no, I got past that part. That, I thought that was the hard part, and it is. It was just up here further, I think. Oh, I dropped it. Like an idiot. Yeah, this part here. I don't know what the hell happened. Honestly, that's nothing. <laughs> just a spaz out moment, I guess. Alrighty guys, that's the end of that short little video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up and, you know, subscribe for more. Bloody blah blah. Uh, I'll catch you on the next one. in that roadworks again. Some sort of conspiracy. Every time I'm coming home from a ride I get stuck at roadworks. For fucking ages.